Father, we bless you to trust your word in the name of Jesus. Um, this is followership, you know, the, the concept of followership part two. Now we are going to start from John chapter 6, verse 11. A true master must be able to make do with little. You don't have you don't need to have the big. If you are truly a master, you should be able to work with the little until it becomes the big. You don't you don't start from the big. You are better to start from the small. And from the small, you move to the big. A godly master must always be ready to turn few loaves of bread into many. That is miracle, not turning stone to bread. Turning few loaves of bread to many is called miracle. But turning stones to bread is called magic. That's why Jesus turned down the request of the devil in the wilderness. One of the things a true master must teach his follower must teach his followers is giving thanks and not necessarily giving commands. Teach your people how to give thanks, not necessarily giving commands. Jesus multiplied the loaves before the disciples and not behind them. And that is to say that a true master must live with total transparency before his followers. The difference between the multitude and the disciples is, itimi- is intimacy. The difference between the multitude and the disciples is intimacy. So if you still do not have any intimacy with God, it means you are not part of his disciples. You are probably among the multitude. Jesus gave the bread to the disciples in order to distribute them to the multitudes. It was as if Jesus was saying, I want to do good to the multitudes, but I don't really know them. Neither do they know me intimately. But you, you I know, and I also, um, you know, so Jesus is now saying, I want to do good to the multitude, but I don't know them, so I will send you to them. So what... There are three links here. Jesus, the disciples, the multitude. So Jesus will bless his disciples to bless the multitude. If God wants to give anything to the multitude, he will give it to the disciples first. So, and then instruct the disciples to reach out to the multitudes. The hope of the multitudes is the disciples the multitude will you know the in this in this verse the multitude would have suffered hunger if there was no disciple that means if there is no one that had intimacy with jesus so there are many multitude around us there are many the, there are many people who can be regarded to as multitudes but those people will suffer if there are no disciples the multitude will always suffer when there are no people that have intimacy with Jesus because it is only those who have intimacy with Jesus that can bring the will of God to the people. The hope of Jesus reaching the multitude is the disciples. The word set down, according to verse 11 of John chapter 6, means ready to receive. The multitudes are the ones that need to be, to be ready to receive. The disciples are always set. Now, please take note of these three channels of spiritual blessings. These are the three channels of spiritual blessings. The Father, the disciples, and the multitudes. In the three channels of spiritual blessings, the multitudes, you know, the, the disciples are the middlemen. God does not deal directly with the multitudes. He deals with the disciples to deal with the multitudes. In other words, the blessings of the multitudes is hanging on the alignment of the disciples. 
is hanging on the alignment of the disciples to their master. Until we, the disciples, align to the master, the multitude will not be blessed. So, what your alignment will do to you will flow to the multitudes. In verse 11, we can see this lesson also. We can also see that uh, don't show to the people what you have not shown to God. Don't show to the people what you have not shown to God. Don't give to the head what you have not presented to God. God gave thanks to God before giving to the disciples. So, don't present to your people what you have not presented to God. If you want to be a true leader, that's one of the protocols. Don't tell the people what you have not told God. That's, that's the order. Tell God first, and after God is fully aware, then you can now bring it to your people, if God permits. By giving what you have to God, you have increased it. Whatever you give to God receives increase and purification. Anyone who does not have the habit of giving is in sin because what he believed, what he believed he has was given to him. Anything that we can be given can also be given. Giving thanks is giving to God. Jesus gave thanks to God for the little loaves of bread and fish that he had with him with faith in God and that small portion of food became many. It takes faith to engage in such thanksgiving. The strength of every true leader is in their faith in God. In the three channels of spiritual blessings, the person with the clearest sight is the master. Jesus gave thanks because he could see the invisible hand of God multiplying the few loaves of bread and fishes, while the disciples could only see the visible hand of God giving to them. What kind of faith do you have? Jesus had a faith that saw the invisible, while the disciples had the kind of faith that could see the visible, because we are called to be like Jesus. Now, we must have the God kind of faith. The faith that is like Jesus. You know, the, 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 the faith that is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. To be a true follower. There's a sacrifice to pay. And then to also be a true leader, there are also sacrifices to pay. The Lord, I pray the Lord will help us. This is the wisdom of God. Don't sell it. 